you've been warned this is going to be a very very long one but today i'm going to nerd out completely and recommend 22 books i think you should definitely be reading in 2022 if you haven't done so yet if you're my kind of person some of these will hopefully resonate with you but let's get started and go number one has got to be my favorite book of all time that i discovered in 2021 and that is time enough for love it is such a good book it's absolutely beautiful it made me refall in love with fiction again it is incredible it's a futuristic sci-fi story set on another planet after we've gone into an interplanetary species in the future and there are certain people who live basically forever and one of these people is the protagonist but this book is just brilliant this book is philosophy and psychology and self-help without even trying to do any of these things so you're just reading it as a fun and engaging and quite weird at times story but the underside of the book just has so many threads of beautifulness when it comes to the human mind the human nature human connections life and love and death and mortality it is brilliant it's absolutely amazing i just have to go through one of my favorite existential parts of this book that says there is no time there is no space what was is and ever shall be you are you playing chess with yourself and again you have checkmated yourself you are the referee. Morals are your agreement with yourself to abide by your own rules. To thine own self, be true or you spoil the game. It's just so good. I would 100% recommend this so much. <laughs> The second book I would strongly recommend is Rip It Up and this is such a cool one because it's around the science of happiness and you can read it as a self-help book but I hate self-help books so I don't think it's meant to be one. It's just a science book but the science is around happiness so it tends so it ends up being a self-help book without meaning to do so. So yeah, it's a sneaky one, but it worked for me. It was fine. Um, the book talks about happiness and it's centered around the as if principle, which basically means that we feel things physically and then we interpret our emotions rather than feeling our emotions first. So it kind of flips the whole world on its head and it gives you this very, very powerful tool, I think, that can help in certain times to make you just that bit happier in life. One thing that I love from this book is the view that it's much more helpful to just laugh in the morning than write a huge gratitude journal because studies show that just laughing and physically doing things as though you are happy will make you a lot happier in the long run it's really cool definitely would recommend absolutely everyone to read the third book i would recommend is the course of love and of course i would have to have a book by Alain de Botton, who's one of my favorite modern philosophers this is a very interesting fictional book where he just describes a romantic relationship between two people but it's kind of it's so interesting because it's very dry and it because in a way it's very dry and it describes the very mundane things it's kind of the story for you if you're the sort of person who thinks well you know what happens in disney movies after they get together and why are all real life relationships seemingly so different to stories and romance online and what happens later so it kind of glamorizes the mundane and makes mundane the glamour of life and it kind of puts everything on the same level to be dissected. I think it just gives you so much insight into human relationships and interactions and the philosophy and psychology behind these things. I just think it's a must read for any sort of person who ever wants to be in a sort of romantic relationship or wants to understand them more. I think it should be mandatory reading in school. It's just so 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 good. 100% would recommend it to kind of get to know yourself better and to get to know other people better. Next book I would recommend is a bit of a weird one and it's called Unconditional Parenting. I got a lot into reading about parenting books this year. It's part of my kind of self-growth, self-help journey to try and re-teach myself things that I perhaps have trauma from in the past and this book has helped massively. It's just so brilliant. I don't have children and um, I don't know how applicable these actually are practically to children so if you're a parent take my advice with a grain of salt but it's so so useful for yourself. I think this book has just given me so much insight into what has happened in my past and how perhaps that has shaped me as a person and how potentially I can understand and maybe even unlearn things in my psychology and the way that I view myself and the world. Something that I absolutely loved from this book was the view that positive and negative reinforcement are in a way just as bad and not a good strategy in the long term and also something that I absolutely loved was the view that we should treat children as valuable in their own right rather than potential adults and as the adults that they will become and this is really valuable even for myself because I feel like very often I treat myself as not valuable right now but valuable once I do the things that I want to do and achieve the things that I'm working on and want to achieve rather than realizing that I'm just fine and valuable right now. This is not groundbreaking but it's very groundbreaking for me very much would recommend this book next is surely you're joking mr feynman this is such a good and funny biography i've recently gotten into biographies i 
hated them in the past, but Richard Feynman is one of the most famous physicists and teachers ever. He is such an eccentric and fun man. He's a massive nerd and I think he's quite confident in a quirky way and he's a, definitely a lifelong learner. He really thinks outside of the box and he has this very extremely rational thinking I think that is just very very funny because this book if you are a hugely rational thinker or if you try to think rationally a lot there's so much escapism in this book through listening to someone else describing things and talking the way that you do so it's just so 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 brilliant I would 100% recommend it it's very very funny too so absolutely brilliant read the next book I would recommend is Algorithms to Live By and I read this book thinking that I usually feel very strongly against these ways of thinking in general. And what I mean by this is that it kind of takes real life problems like, oh, how do you hire someone? And, or, or how do you find a house to buy? And it applies mathematical, rational thinking to solving the problem. And I love and hate this. I think that I have these tendencies myself, but I'm more curious about this stuff. And when it comes to real life, I just think that emotions are the fun and just doing just following our impulses in a safe way is where humanity and living actually comes in while the reasonable oh this is what the math says is kind of not that applicable to day-to-day -day life I think but nonetheless I think this book so I think this book was quite fun for me to explore in a way and see well what would the science say to this problem in my life which was quite fun I think again it gives you these frameworks of thinking that you can use sometimes if you don't have any other solutions or just to understand what would be theoretically the best thing to do if that's even a possibility. The thing that I love about this book is that it teaches you how to think rather than what you think. I don't like books that tell me what to think, I just find that a bit weird, but it teaches you new mechanisms and I think it's just like another tool to add to the toolbox for use sometimes, so would recommend in that way. The next book is The Righteous Mind and it is so good, it's so good. This book gives you so much relief and understanding that you are not set in stone. Who you think you are is not actually who you are and we just have no clue in so many ways that we do not even consider. So much of our actions, behaviours and thoughts are just justifying things that our brain has already done and we are a little bit of a mess in a way that we don't appreciate. But that just brings the beauty into humanity, I think. I think this book is just a prayer for embracing chaos, emotional decision making and the randomness that is life. It's just completely beautiful, would 100% recommend it. It can show you so much of your biases in your mind and all the different and small ways you can be influenced into decisions that you never even thought that you would do. And these happen constantly, every single day. If you like psychology or the way that the human brain works, 100% brilliant book. The next book is The Almanac of Naval Varikant and him being one of my favourite people on earth. I don't know how, I did not, had not read this book until 2021, but it's so good. Naval is another one of these modern philosophers and I quite like him because he's not theoretically a philosopher, but he's kind of fallen into philosophy, as in he just observes the world and talks about it in a way that's not too structured and therefore I think tends to be very non-controversial and non-extremist. I feel like most philosophies are really 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 extreme but Naval for me tends to sit on a happy medium most of the time so for that reason he's very easy to recommend and very easy to consume and to implement and the Almanac of Naval Varikant is literally like a workbook for happiness and for self-acceptance and for loving people and having a beautiful life. It's just should be again in one of those mandatory reading book lists I think. I would make it mandatory if I could. <laughs> the next book is Shoe Dog and I only read it this year, I don't know why. Again, I don't like biographies so I thought I wouldn't like it and also it's about the founder of Nike so I thought it's just going to be a dry business book and god knows I have had to read so many of those recently but this book was just so good. There's so many threads of story throughout it that you can read it as a potential parent, you can read it as how did he follow his ambition, how did he follow his desire and how did he follow his mental health health and his personal health and his goals and dreams and work. It's just so good. There's so many threads through it. So it's brilliant. My main thread, the main thread that I preferred was his view on working in general, because I find it so funny that he says that he never feels like he's working. And that's how he obviously built this like huge, huge, huge empire of Nike. And it always was the best thing for him. While when you see the details in the book, he's in pain all the time. He's stressed and he's angry and he's not sleeping and he's frustrated and he's having to deal with all these problems. And I thought this just sounds more like the average person to me than someone who's enjoying what they're doing. But I think this is what the book taught me, that 
the difference between people who hate their jobs and people who love their jobs is not how many times they're in pain or having fun over them, because those apparently are quite similar. It's just how they feel about it. I mean, this guy always felt that he could never imagine not doing what he's doing, even though it was so painful. While in other cases where I've hated my job, I feel like I would leave at the first opportunity. So I think that gave me so much insight into work being play, as in it's still painful, it's still often horrible, but you very much want to do it. So it was super insightful for me, definitely a book that I would love other people to read. The next book is The Art of Impossible and this is really really cool. This book is like a little cheerleader in your corner giving you the inspiration and the right words to say and do what you want when you're a bit insecure about doing things I think. So there's not that much substance to this book but it has a lot of inspirational quotes and I usually hate inspirational quotes but these even though they're very very cheesy they're quite nice. I don't know why, they just got to me in a good way. So for example, some phrases were that um, the reason that we're not living up to our potential is that we're not in the habit of living up to our potential, which I thought, that's quite cool. Um, and also another one was that the only thing more difficult than the emotional toil of pursuing true excellence is the emotional toil of not pursuing true excellence. These are very, very simplistic, but sometimes they just hit right and they just resonate with me so well. So this book has some nice quotes and a lot of inspiration. So if you're in the stage that you just need, you know, that little kick to get things done, this is a brilliant book to get you inspired to reach your true potential or just enjoy life more is what I'd be happier to say. The next book is Personality Isn't Permanent. This is a psychology book and it kind of dispels the thought that we are completely set in stone the way that we are and it kind of shows how much of our environment has shaped us and is constantly shaping us and it empowers you a lot because I think that even though there's so much in our environment that is completely out of our control that we cannot change, that will change even though we don't want it to and there's so much randomness and effects that are external there's still some small things here and there that we can tweak and we can do and this book just shows the power of making these small changes so I think it is massively massively empowering to everyone to kind of read it I think and see that and to see that you are potentially unintentionally changing your life and shaping yourself every single day so there's small ways that you can be slightly more intentional with it and perhaps go in the direction that you thought that you want to go. So it's quite cool for that reason. A phrase that I love from this book is that it is your responsibility to set your future self up for as much opportunity, success and joy as possible. Quite problematic in many ways, but also a very good phrase sometimes. So I love it. The next book is The Courage to be Disliked. It's a love-hate book, but I still think everyone should read it. I hate the way that it's written. I hate the fact that it's quite extremist, but I know that it's it's extreme because it's a branch of thought. So Adlerian philosophy is quite extreme. Like it says, trauma is not a thing and it doesn't exist. And I completely disagree with that. However, I think it's one of those other tools that kind of helps me and my toolbox grow. So my favorite thing from the book was the distinction between my tasks and someone else's task. And this is something that I just wish we all, all knew because it's been so liberating for me to see the world in this way. The older I get, the more people I know, the more things I've done, the more involved I am with different situations and groups of people. And especially when you're online, these things become so muddied up and there is so much going on consistently around me that just having that distinction when I can apply it of what is my task and what is someone else's task or my problem or someone else's problem is just so, so, so liberating. And it's a very helpful way to kind of create some distance in life. And especially when you need it, when things are negative. So for that reason, this book goes definitely in my recommended list. The next book that I loved is Thanks for the Feedback. The premise of this book is that there is so much feedback that we are giving and receiving consistently in our life. And we never completely outgrow the need for approval that we used to have for our parents, but we kind of express it in different ways as adults. And there are both productive and unproductive ways to give and, uh, to give and interpret and understand other people's feedback in general. So this book is super, super empowering in terms of communication, self-confidence and self-improvement. So I definitely recommend it for that. The phrase that I love from this book is that this is how you are only means that this is how you are in relation to how I am. And it's always to be taken with a grain of salt when anyone tells us anything. And it says honestly, just as much about them than it does about us, both when this feedback is positive or negative or neutral or anything in general. Great book. Next is The Soul of Money. This is such a beautiful read. Um, it's a book about 
It's a book about finances, but not in the dry finance way. It's more about the philosophy and the psychology of money and how it affects our life, our views on the world, the way that we do things and our relationships with others. So it is so beautiful. I think that one thing that it can one thing that it really really set into my mind was the scarcity mindset and I had never realized how much of a scarcity mindset we have in our life in general and it's not just to do with money and this view of not having enough and needing more is so deeply embedded in us that if you're fortunate enough to not be completely thrashing and unable to sustain yourself maybe taking a moment to pause and to appreciate the things that we have in our life and kind of pause the constant consumerism and push that we get from so many directions of wanting and needing more 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 is just so 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 calming and if you do have the scarcity mindset even having too much is never enough so it's more of a mindset change that we need in terms of being happy and accepting what we have rather than kind of changing and thriving for more all the time absolutely brilliant and if you want to look at your life in a different way it's an extremely emotional book i actually have a summary of this book and so many books um, that i mentioned today in my newsletter so i'll have a link for that somewhere down there if you want to um, read the summaries and my full full thoughts on these books. Next is a science of storytelling. I am a huge storytelling nerd both because I love to over interpret books that I read or movies that I see but also because I just think that there is storytelling in so many aspects of life. I love to live my life in a way that I pursue the best story very often so if I have a difficult decision to make and I'm not confident enough to do it I think oh this will make a good story so it gives me another push. So for this reason and many other reasons I just love storytelling in general and this is a great start to that. This book has a bit too much psychology for me because I've read the psychology in so many other books, but if you like psychology and if you like books and storytelling, definitely read it. It's really, really good. Two phrases that I love from this book are that who we are is how we are broken. And secondly, being free, e being free to be evil, even if only in our minds can be such a relief. And this tells a lot about the kind of books and stories that we read and we should potentially be reading. So it's great. The next book is one that I'm reading right now actually which is Finite and Infinite Games. This is so so cool. I've heard about this mentioned in many other books so I thought finally I had to go to the original source about thinking of this view of finite and infinite games. A finite game is something that you start and you want it to stop so you can win and that's like graduating the first from university or you know getting a bonus at your job at the end of the year and infinite games are games that you lose if you stop so you want to continue them for the rest of your life and the goal of the game is to play them for as long as possible and I think it's such a good way to distinguish things wherein I am the kind of person I think and I want to be the kind of person who chases more infinite games in my life than finite games because finite games they have a lot there's a lot of psychology behind them and how game and how people play these games and it's not the best thing it's not it's unavoidable but it's not that nice but while an infinite game is kind of gives you so much more perspective and peace in your life so for example if you're playing a finite game with university you just want to graduate and be the top well if you're playing an infinite game with university with me for example i think well you know university is just one stage of me becoming someone who wants to improve other people's health in my life so it just becomes a small part of it there's a lot less anxiety around it it just becomes a tool and something that i'm doing in a much bigger picture and a much bigger game so i think viewing your life this way and also viewing people in the way that oh i could play an infinite game with this person they could be in my life forever and i really really like them and they see things the way that i see them with a lot less anxiety and more calmness and more long-term thinking so it's a really cool book to have this extra perspective that you can use sometimes to view your life and the things that you do and the choices you make the next book is The Third Door and this is a great example of storytelling. It's kind of a weird book because it has a very simple premise which sounds very lame as in a boy wanted to meet a bunch of celebrities but what it actually does it, it really shows you how you can fight to achieve your goals and how you should potentially be trying to do this if uh, how you can potentially do this with basically anything and it's one of those books that is very very inspiring and shows you how you can do anything in life so the third door is like the first door is the obvious door that only celebrities can get through for example the second door is the one that is you know access for everyone but the line is so long and the third door is the sneaky way to get what you want and there's always a sneaky like not in a bad way not in an unethical way but a sneaky roundabout way to get what you want and this book just kind of shows you that you should just try to do things just go out there put yourself out there reach out to people talk to people and this is definitely a message that I need to hear so much um, in order to even function off an, on a normal level so so I can function as a normal person I need to hear this message screamed at me very very often so for that reason this book was definitely very inspiring and it really resonated with me the next book I loved and I think everyone should read is we are our brains and this is a book by Dick Swab on kind of the 
how our brains are formed from the moment of conception to childbirth, to childhood, to teenage years, older years, up to Alzheimer's and death. And it kind of explores all the changes of our brains throughout these stages and lots of the science behind this. I know this book has been shown to be problematic for different reasons. However, I don't think that we should like throw it away completely. It's actually been super, super helpful for me, even as a medical student, to understand a bit better how our brains work and how our human anatomy, physiology and neuroscience works. So great book for that reason. Next book is With the End in Mind. And this is a book around the end of life care and death in general. It's written by a palliative care doctor who treats patients who are close to dying. And she's just summarized a lot of her insights and thoughts around death in general. If you've read um, Being Mortal by Atul Gawande, this book will be something that you will definitely love. It kind of showed me just how tightly I hold on to things that I want and how much I want to control my life when really very, very soon I'm going to get to the point where I can't control anything and I can't even say what I want and I can't control my thoughts or my body or my bowels. And there's really no purpose in being so kind of wound up when you are younger and also it kind of helps with loving the ones around you and being kinder. Something that I really really liked in this book was the view that when people are close to their death they tend to think that um, people around them are being so much kinder to them but the reason for that is not because they are dying but the reason for that is that when you are nearing the end of the life your perspective tends to shift from yourself to your loved ones and the ones around you and you tend to be so much kinder to them and it's that kind of behavior that then is reflected back to you and I think this is so underrated and something that we don't need to wait to be close to death to do and to appreciate so just being nicer yeah <laughs> not groundbreaking but very well explained in this book Next is how to take smart notes. And this is potentially in a different category, one of my favorite books of all time. It's completely changed the way that I consume information and the way that I read books and the way that I make notes. It speaks so much towards creativity and how the blank page should be a complete myth and how note-taking and organizing thoughts is the best way to produce content. And it has been the center of every creation that's a stretch but anything that I've made in my life um, and it is just a cornerstone I think of any sort of nerd should read this book just 100% it is brilliant how to take smart notes honestly could not recommend it more absolutely life-changing it has kind of made one of the best videos on my channel on creating my second brain and potentially I'm going to make a course on that so this book has just been absolutely central to my life and I would definitely recommend it to all nerds out there because if you made it to this stage honestly you you're probably a nerd so read this book it's really really good the next one is overcoming perfectionism and i left it to the end because if you're the sort of person who somehow enjoys my content so much that you made it this far you might be a perfectionist maybe i hope not but you might have perfectionist tendencies and i'm definitely dealing with my perfectionism quite a lot in the last year there's a clinical book on perfectionism that i really really liked so i would definitely kind of recommend it to understand a bit more around the habits that you perhaps have created and the limiting thoughts and the not so good thinking patterns that you may have that kind of um, spiral you towards, that kind of spiral you and push you towards perfectionist thoughts. I'm sure if you have any sort of perfectionist or OCD or OCPD tendencies, you will very much resonate with a lot of the things in the book. Like for example, discounting your achievements and thinking that you just got lucky or that, you know, other, um, that things weren't that difficult or anything like that. Just, there's just too much in this book. It's absolutely brilliant if you're in this category at all. So definitely would give it a read. And lastly, I just had to add this here just in case, just in case you're in my audience and you haven't read Harry Potter, please read it. It is the best book on earth. I am constantly reading a Harry Potter book at any point in my life. So, so please read it. It's brilliant. The universe of Harry Potter, the characters, the connections, the growth, it just feels like home in so many ways. And if you don't have this home to escape to in your mind, create it. It's so beautiful. I wish I could do it all over again. So yes, that was everything. I did say this was going to be quite a long video and I have perhaps spoken a bit too fast, in which case apologies. If you made it up to here, sign up to my newsletter. I have a newsletter where I, every time that I read a book that I think should be shared with people, I make notes on it and summarize it and send it out to you. It's completely free. It will be in my description. Otherwise, I have a bunch of videos on books that will be somewhere on the screen if you want to continue this book reading journey. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks. Bye.